Hello, Internet, and welcome to episode 7 of the Produce Cast, the Produce 48 podcast, now with 50% more produce. <laughs> this is the first time we're Needs actually. more IOI. Uh, no, yeah, no, this is the first time we're covering it, something that's not uh, Produce 48 or uh, Eyes 1. So, yeah, this is this is uncharted territory, guys. Uncharted territory. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to IOI one day, whenever they make their reunion. I don't know. <laughs> 2021. Yep. So on Five this, ad- <laughs> God, we're gonna graduate from college. Yeah, that's gonna. I'm, I'm we- fine to Korea. I don't <laughs> care. How old are you gonna I'm be going to by 2021? 2021 will be my 30th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, on this episode of Produce Cast, we are going to be covering uh one one uh latest and possibly final comeback. Uh one to the eleventh power equals one power of destiny. And uh our That's second name. Yeah, name we'll, we'll get to heard. that. We'll get to that, trust <laughs> me. Um and our second topic will be a fun one. It's our uh, dream uh, Produce 48 lineup, so enjoy. Um, before that, we'll get the housekeeping out of the way. Obviously, if you haven't checked up on any of our prior Produce uh, Cast episodes, you're more than welcome to subscribe or just look through our YouTube channel. You'll find uh, the rest of them in the feed. Uh, definitely like the video if you uh, enjoy this kind of content. Um, we definitely need that feedback. Also, if you prefer... Uh, listening to your uh, podcast as opposed to watching our beautiful faces. Uh, you can go check us out on SoundCloud and on iTunes and on Stitcher. Also, you can join our uh, Truly Daybok Discord, which is Mucho Lit, and there is a Eyes One Friends One uh, channel where you could talk about everything Eyes One. There's also an IOI branch chat. And oh, wait, I feel bad. One on one's the only one that we don't have. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but, probably about but yeah, I'll say <laughs> the only the reason we have an IOI one is because of me. Yeah. So. And obviously, produce for needs those reasons. But hey, well, we can make we can make a one on one. One on once we have once we have branch groups, honestly, it'll yeah, probably we'll have to. We'll have to yeah, just because so. it's yeah, gonna be exactly. That, that's a topic for another day. If people actually care about them, other oh. than Kong Dynasty. Oh, no, don't say that. Don't say that. You're going to hear... There's Wannables watching. Anyway, uh, I should introduce the uh, co-hosts for this evening. First, in the middle, we have the IOI master, the self-proclaimed number one IOI fan in the world, Nathan Swisher. Uh, so I had really good English lyrics, but then I realized I should save them for next week because they're not really relevant to produce cast. <laughs> so I don't have English lyrics. But I definitely look forward to next week because they're good. Um, that's about it. Oh, I didn't get to go see Day 6, unfortunately. Oh, damn. Ooh, Sad rip. boy. And on the left, we have the lover of giraffes. Yes. <laughs> Jacob Bird. Yeah, I, I love Yi Kwang Su from Running Man. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, anyways, um... I'm Jacob. Hashtag no blow note. Wrong show. It's from the, it's from the day podcast, but it's <laughs> anyway, fine. Go check yeah, that out. Close enough. Go check it out. Um, yeah, they're all this. Tech, they're all the same show. If you really think about it. Yeah, if you really yeah, think I mean, about same it, it's, format, just, it's all the same. So. same we don't difference. even think of creative enough names. We just had to cast to the end of shit. <laughs> fine. <laughs> and I am Andrew Lee, and your produce fact of the day, which is I guess the new thing I'll start doing. Did you know? Bananas are good for you. No. <laughs> Though I, I, bananas, I would say, are my favorite. It depends on... Yeah. It, it depends on... For, it'd be, bananas would be like 1A, and then green apples would be also one like 1B. One because mm. green, green apples are where it's at. Yeah, because if, if it's not green apples, I don't fuck with it otherwise. but Although I recently had pomegranate for the first time, and I love pomegranate <laughs> flavored nah, things, and, I'm, but... I'm not picking pomegranate. I've never had it. I wasn't... I that you was first time seeds. I was into it. Yeah, I did. Anyway, your fact of the Shout day out to is Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> did you know Kang Daniel was a backup dancer for Kao Lu? Um Kao Lu did it, it was part of like a, a variety show or something or a music show or something. She was doing a cover of Invitation by Um Jung Wa and one of the dancers, backup dancers was Kang Daniel. But you couldn't really tell it was him because he was wearing like a like a face mask or like he was supposed to be like a ninja or something like that. But yeah, she was mm. I remember um there was an article where she was like, "Oh, I'm just, I'm rooting for him on Produce 101 or whatever because he was a, his back or he was the backup dancer and everything." So, yeah. From from humble nice. beginnings. 
All right, housekeeping's out of the way. We can get into the album review of 101's first full album slash final full album slash final release ever. Is this their first one? Yeah, this is, they've never done, everything uh, else has been like well, a, a I don't movie. know, I guess I shouldn't question it, because I, well, I never got a full album. Yeah, at least, yeah, be happy they're getting a full album. Entitled, 1 to the 11th power equals 1, parentheses, power of destiny. Nate, take it away. I can see on yep. Nate's face, he's just salty that I, I didn't get a full album. Oh, 100%. 100%. The instant I said that and realized that, I was just upset. <laughs> <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry about that. First of all, this name of this album is dumb. But all the names of all their albums are dumb. Um, I like how they have to qualify. Like, they have to put, like, an actual name because the stupid equations are just dumb. Like, all the albums have, like, parentheses of name of the actual album. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, uh, so we start out with Destiny, which is the intro. It's a cover. Um, It's decent. It's a cover of the video game. (laughs) It's a cover of the video game. It's a cover of the... SNSD Lovelies? song from G. SNSD song, Lovely song. I think, I think that's a lovely single. Um, I liked it. It's I like the chip tune synth parts. Um, the mixing seemed off though for me. I don't know, like something, just like the level seemed off. If that makes sense. I mean, normally I don't really know how to put it. Normally, it bother me, that. but I mean. It's future based, so I'm just like, yes, bring up all, bring up all the instrumentals, make it as loud as possible. Um, yeah, I'd say other than that, I'd say this just goes down in the list of intro songs that should be full songs. Like it's a growing list at this point. Honestly, there's just way too many at this point. Because yeah, I really love this song. Okay, so for side me, note, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, side note, I was literally like looking through my songs today, and I was like, I should just make a playlist of intro songs because I was looking <laughs> at the list of like of song names, and then I just got to the eyes, and it was just like intro, 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 intro. I was like, I should just make a playlist of these because these are all great. That's a that's a theoretical day broadcast topic. Top ten in K-pop. In oh yeah, we should, yeah we should rank <laughs> album intro. This would probably this would probably oh, be up there. I really love that. this. I, I really love the I really love the drop in this though, so that's why it, it totally deserves of being a full song, honestly. So for me, I was kind of on the other end. I I really liked the verses and everything that led led up, but I wasn't a huge fan of the drop because it was kind of for me a little leaning into the chain smokers territory, which kind of comes off as a little generic. <laughs> Those for me. damn chain smokers! And I I just <laughs> I can't deal with it. I can't deal with that. Like that's all I can think about. It'll never um, end. I do still agree that I'd like to hear it as a full song, as long as they don't like rely on the drop too much as being the chorus or something. That would be mm. cool. Um, like if they do it once as maybe as like a bridge or something like that, I'd be fine with it. I could deal with it, but you know, it would yeah. be the chorus. If they did It'd that. be the chorus because that's yeah, kind of like the just it's, it, the build up. Uh, the build up otherwise would just it it kind of have no point. Uh, next we have Spring Breeze, which is the title track. Um. So for me, I like the synth steering the chorus a lot, um, and I think it's a good vocal showcase. The But the pre-chorus part, where the beat goes away, it's like really abrupt sounding, and like that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel um, Choreo's great, as always, uh, and the music video is pretty disappointing. It's just a bunch of green screen. <laughs> Like it's uh, really, it's really bad. Green it's a glorified box MV. It really yeah. is, if you think about it. It's just a glorified box MV. Um, I guess just yeah to, to sort of uh, take up on that point. If it was a more interesting music video, I would have definitely enjoyed it more. And also, I'd say the other like complaint I have, it's just like ninety percent of the music video is oh my god, look at one oh one, they're doing cute things together instead of showcasing the really awesome choreography that they actually had. Like you probably only yeah. get about like thirty seconds of choreography in. in in the long run of it, which is a shame because they one one always has great choreography. So, if anything, yeah. that's they should be playing to that strength. Um, as for the actual song, it just it felt weird for the longest time until I sort of like nailed down what was making it sound weird to me. It was or just feel like not off or just like familiar. I was just like, yo, this this sounds like Spring Day by BTS. If you mm. really think about it, it's kind of like Spring they're, Day, Spring Breeze. Yeah, What's I'm just difference? like, is that is is that like intentional? Because it's very similar in that sort of like it has a similar vibe to Spring Day, just maybe with a bit more um, just weird like synth uh, tracks instead of just like the I guess more like a 
like bare and acoustic nature of it. Um, I do like I do like that they are trying to, or I do like the balance because um, obviously early in the year we got Boomerang, which I hated, um, and we got Light, which I loved. So it was like they they had like two really hype tracks, and then I like the contrast between or as singles prior. I, I like the contrast of having this be a more um, ballad track a la beautiful which i think yeah it was definitely a sort of motif that they went to in this um and obviously i like their anytime that like the members like jay jay or ong or ha sung woon just get those showcase or voices like that it's it's always a plus um i'd have to say yeah i do enjoy it a lot um but yeah that, that one part where like that pre-chorus where it's just kind of like empty it it could have done yeah. without it, honestly. It's like one of those cases where kind of like a like a Pristin like we like where you just cut you just make a cut or whatever and just it sounds better. Um that being said, I I still do enjoy the song overall. It the the vocals are incredible, especially during the chorus. It's super catchy, just been stuck in my head. Like and if you look at the lyrics, this, this basically is their downpour. Um, just like it's just like all the stuff about like, oh we'll meet a, we'll meet to get again like later and all that sort of stuff and I love um, the one thing I really did like about um, just sort of the the teasers and they incorporated into the MV is there's a cassette tape that they have and the way it's wound it's sort of like an infinity symbol so it's like in like sort of like it it's not the end of Wanda One ultimately and also just it's it's a motif that they keep going back to um, in between this and the last track which is a uh, part two of Beautiful but we'll get there so yeah I, I do appreciate the symbolism that they have in the in in this track just in general so yeah for overall i did i did like the song uh Confirmed. so for me what? 101 is time traveling infinite ah <laughs> um so i i did actually um enjoy this song like it's good but for some reason i felt a little bit like underwhelmed i guess if that makes sense like and it doesn't mean i didn't like it it was just like a, f- a feeling i got kind of thing um like I, I liked all the instrumentals. I really like uh um like how it was mixed, like the um you know, volume of the vocals versus the instrumentals, especially in the chorus. I think like it sort of like opens it up quite quite well. Um but again, like I don't know, I just I didn't feel that much from it, I guess. I felt like I was supposed to, if that makes sense. Though Indeed. maybe it's just because I never got too much into one one or something, but because I did yeah. like the song. It was kind of just <laughs> weird. Uh, I, don't know. Yeah. I can't really place I think my it's just, on, I guess. I think just a lot of our... Because if you go back to before Produce Cast even existed, when we just did mm-hmm. uh, like 101's de- debut uh, mini as a review, like you could yeah. tell how over the moon we were with energetic and as we've mm, said like yeah. constantly it's just like it's Can't all down downhill from yeah. here it's just it's just yeah. it's just nigh impossible for anything to outdo energetic at this point so it's just our expectations yeah. are yeah. definitely in a different place just because of i don't know just because it's coming after that so that could explain it yeah. maybe it was, it was yeah. the opposite of iy's trajectory which just kept going up yeah from <laughs> it started Dream from Girls. the bottom <laughs> Yeah, um, reverse trajectory. Yeah, but yeah, I I agree with you, Jacob. I'm kind of like the same feeling. It's hard to put it, but yeah, it's just like it was kind of underwhelming. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. for their last song. Um, yeah, you'd hope they'd be like. Able to I was hit just hoping something. they'd completely just blow the roof off of me. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah exactly. Mean? Like it's their last, their last album. Mm. Jacob has a roof on him. <laughs> yeah, blow whatever. The roof off of me. You know, what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, okay, let's move on. Next is One's Place. Um, I like the use of strings throughout this song, um, especially during the build-up to the drop. Um, the other thing I liked about it was the, um, during the rap verse, they do double time. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Like, it definitely made the song pick up. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. This is one of two songs produced by E1 off of this album. E1 has uh, known for doing Secret by Would You Sonio, I Feel You by Wonder Girls, and Lucky by EXO. So a lot of pedigree here. Um, uh, with that being said, I did like the instrumental a lot, but I feel like where it re- this song kind of let me down was, I don't know, the chorus was just kind of a letdown. It's basically... The chorus was just kind of like an opposite of Destiny where like the verses are really hype, but... Or, or the verses are okay, but like the the chorus just feels super like 
generic and uninspired and it, i mean great it doesn't ruin the song entirely but i feel like they could have written something a bit more interesting melody wise considering how many good singers there are in in one one i feel like they could be a bit more adventurous with how they they write the melodies for this song and yeah, yeah, yeah the future bass even couldn't like complete the song for me unfortunately but yeah that, mm. I, that that'd probably be like the only major gripe i'd have with it just the chorus kind of just with it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily like build to resolution ultimately. Mm. Mm-hmm. Am I second or is Nate second? I don't no, remember. you're you're third. You I already went. I started. Oh, already went. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm reading. Welcome the song to the names. produce cast. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyways. Uh. So I'm again like kind of like flipped on Andrew. Like I actually really really like this song. Um. I thought it turned out pretty well. I like this one a lot more than the Spring Breeze. Um. Although I will agree with the fact that I think the uh, the instrumentals definitely carried this song, because that was like one of my main notes was I really really loved the instrumentals, so I think uh, it kind of makes up for any uh, weaknesses elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next we have Flower Bomb. Um, for this, I liked the synths a lot, um, especially the one thing that I noticed was like there's a super subtle like higher pitch synth in the background. Um, that I thought yeah. like fit really well. Um, but yeah, overall it was pretty decent. Uh, this was co or Ha Sung Woon helped, uh, produce and write this, which is pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of them got, uh, production credits on this, on this last release. Um, along, or it was produced alongside ORO and vendors. Uh, I haven't heard of them in particular, but just wanted to mention that since I was mentioning Ha Sung Woon, uh, a lot more, future R&B style like if any if this was going to remind me of a particular group if anything it's kind of reminding me of like what like either 17 or Got 7 have been messing around with lately like there is definitely that style of future R&B um which yeah which definitely made me enjoy this song and again it it fits well with uh, the balance of rappers and singers that they have in 101. So yeah, this was definitely one of the standout tracks for me. Like mm. again, and it didn't it didn't have the problem that One's Place had, where I felt like the the chorus just kind of killed the song. I feel like yeah, the, the chorus definitely made this song. If anything, uh, so for me, uh, right off the bat, like again, I love when they do like subtle things with the sound. Um, like in the beginning, I love the sort of like firework sounds almost in the background that were mm-hmm. kind of subtle. Um, and uh yeah so i feel like again this is kind of being carried by the instrumental Mm -hmm. and that everything else is kind of lagging behind a little bit for me so i think this one suffered from it a little more than once place for me however i do think the chorus was uh was high impact enough that again it makes up for it it's just like little like tiny things that kind of felt off i guess but yeah, I think mm-hmm. with this song in particular, I think it could be better. Like, um, if I just listen to it more, more times, yeah, because I think, I think the, it's uh, me. Like, when I'm listening to music, I'm expecting something to happen that it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Like, it's subversion of expectations. But yeah, I exactly. think a lot. I think to some degree, like some of these songs, like the first few songs, definitely, like though I did enjoy a lot of them. There are some parts mm-hmm. where it's like, eh, like nothing's perfect. Uh, ultimately, yeah. like there's just like tiny little like sort of shortcomings either in production or just vocal melody or just not making it as interesting as it could have been because yeah i'd say i'd say just in general the the production is probably one of the strong points in this like they're not they're not yeah. uh like they know um god I, who, who are they technically under then so the they're technically under Stone stone music. Or? yeah I think. yeah so yeah there's like they're, on, they're, on itunes at least it says swing entertainment stone music entertainment yeah so swing stone like they're not gonna. They're not gonna half-ass a comeback with how popular they are, and obviously they're, they're yeah. definitely give, they're giving them a great pool of uh, production talent. Definitely. So yep. yeah, it's just yeah, just gotta fix minor things ultimately. Yeah. Uh, next we have one love. Um, for me, like the rap part that opens the song, I thought was really good. Um, <clears throat> and the post-chorus instrumentals I thought were really good, but the drop was like really just meh. Yep. Like, that's it's, literally exactly what I was like. The drop was pretty meh. 
Uh, I'll I'll say it for you, Jacob. I'll, I'll say it for you. It was very yep. chain smoker. <laughs> do you want to do you want to see my notes? Because it literally says that <laughs> it's very. Yeah. It literally says it's very chain smokers. <laughs> no, I said it's too chain smokery. It's, I made a it's new. It's too chain smokery. Yeah, that's chain a that's smokery. a term now. It's chain smokery. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. That, I'd say normally yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Normally I wouldn't mind it. It's just yeah. I'd say it retre- yeah, it retreaded too much of the territory that they kind of covered already in spring breeze <laughs> except just kind of yeah. like yeah that's that's another thing that is, there's some songs on here that sort of just like felt like okay you kind of already did this style so it kind of just seems unnecessary to pad out like the 10 11 12 albums uh, or 11 tracks on here so yeah 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 i don't usually mind chain smoker drops either but yeah it just wasn't for, for me it's just like i i listen to closer one too many times and it makes me want to die every time it comes on now. it's just like you went into it's just like you went into like walmart or whatever one too many times just like god damn it they're playing yeah. closer again or like i'd be driving to work and that's all they play on the radio like five oh, times in a row oh mm, no just bad yeah in my yeah, car, say, like back then, I didn't have an aux cable, so I had to listen to the radio. Oh no, I can't! I can't! I can't. like the second I got a car, like the first thing I did was no, I, I, I no, I'd burn CDs just so I wouldn't have to get oh, yeah. freaking. <laughs> I wouldn't have to listen done. to the radio. That was that was before Jacob's time. What are you talking about? I used to burn <laughs> CDs all the time. Not, but in a car well, for driving. For driving I mean, mixes, yeah, by the time you started driving, you had you, you had, probably had aux cables not from, or not the Bluetooth for me driving, ones. But for like, yeah, so exactly. Go on a trip or something, I'd be like, "Hey, mom, I'm gonna play the CD." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <sighs> okay. Or listen to um, my CD player. Do you have any other comments, Jacob? Other than uh, two yeah, so like, I really, really, really like the rap. I thought that was awesome. Uh, it's like some of their yep. best, in my opinion. Um. It had a catchy hook, but again, too too chain smokery on the drop. Like it kind of soiled it a little bit for me. Mm-hmm. Soiled it. Soiled it. Soiled it. <laughs> Rest in peace, Stephen Hillenburg. Okay, the next song makes up for it for me. Uh, really? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're so next is deeper, um, and really like honestly, my notes for this track are, <laughs> it was at I'm literally I'm gonna read my notes we're all for over the place for this review. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not even. It has nothing to do with this song, oh. but it was at the point for the like at this point that I just started to get bored because <laughs> like I've had enough mellow synth based guy group dance tracks because that's literally this whole album so far. I mean, granted, was if just you're, if you really think type about it, of song that's kind of, that's kind of the boy group landscape I, now. If you really think know. hard enough about it, just like everyone that's come out post twenty fifteen, like this is their style ultimately. Well, so. And that's why I gravitate towards like Stray Kids and Monsta X because yeah. they do like I, like for guy group stuff because they do like yeah different stuff. Um, but yeah, so like he has nothing to do with this song, but I think at like this point of the album, I was just getting bored, and luckily the rest of the songs like made up for it because they well they they did stuff a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was just, I was just like, not another one <laughs> when I heard this song. This one's better than the other ones. That's all I could I, think I, about I, though. I could like, honestly, I can honestly say I probably enjoyed deeper more than I did spring breeze. Like this, you could make an argument yeah, that this could have been a, this could have been the title track just mostly because what really puts this over the top for me is just the amount of emotion and just the intensity that they have in the chorus. Like again, you have incredible singers in like Jaywon yep. and like Ong, Sungwoo, like they utilize it to their full potential here like just like the deeper deeper just like you hear there's just so much emo- this is how you do an emotional ballad track honestly like the i got it i got i was just like okay i get this song almost immediately so yeah i really enjoyed it, it again it, it could have yeah. easily been um the title the title track instead of spring breeze yeah yeah i think so so honestly like 100 percent. this should have been the title track for me um like like i was listening to it i was like okay okay this is good so far as when the chorus hit with the the beat and everything in the background like how big it sounded with the like sort of like reverb almost in the vocals it like sounded really big and um again i've been talking about this for the past few weeks but high impact yes that's what i'm looking for mm. 
and maybe mm-hmm. just steal some of your sort of uh, synesthesia kind of stuff. They do a good job of setting, like, making the, the soundscape very echoey to sort of, yep. like, it's like you kind of imagine it's like, oh, shit, you're in the middle of the ocean and there's, like, a lot of water and nothingness mm-hmm. and, yeah, just like you're... Basically, that type of generic like MV sort of thing. Yeah, that's what the MV would have been if they were gonna make it. Yeah, so mm. something like that along those lines. For, for me, it's almost like more like they're inside of like a really giant cave. You just been <laughs> playing too much Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the rock on the scar- scarred me for life. <laughs> escape from rock escape from wasn't that bad. <laughs> it's so boring though. It all looks the same. Yeah, no, I don't know. I think I think Self Co is the most boring. It's so long. Yep. <clears throat> If you actually go through and fight everything, but yeah, no, yeah, I guess too. maybe maybe I should go back and listen to the song just on its own because mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think like do. listening to the album in a, by this point, yeah, I was just I was just done with it, so I, yep. I probably didn't give it a fair shake. <clears throat> uh, next, we have hide and seek. Uh, so this is a piano ballad. Um, it's nothing like like literally I said like it's nothing special, um, but it did help break my boredom. Um, since it was a little different, it wasn't like a synth based dance track, um, like mellow synth based dance track. It was a mellow piano ballad. <laughs> um, but no, yeah. So I, I, I probably liked it a little bit more because it was different. Um, but yeah. it, it wasn't like, it didn't blow me away or anything. Yeah. I probably say that for a lot of the ballads just because again, it feels like a lot of them just end up retreading the same sort of ground. I felt like they should have just mm-hmm. stuck to one or made one solid uh like ballad and then just like gone with that i i know they're trying to fill out like the they're trying to fill out the the track list for a full album but i feel like again if they could have like cut some of the tracks down a bit that sort of felt repetitive um it could have made the album a bit more like concise or just less less bloated in that sort of way yeah yeah uh okay so for me i I thought that the um, like the vocals were definitely the strength here, and uh, it's it's a little on the simple side, but I still think it, it works it works well enough. And it uh, honestly, like it reminds me quite a lot of like Big Bang, like ballads, that kind of Basically, thing. Basically, so, yeah. I, I think that's sort of the template they're going off of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we have a wake. Um, for this, I liked the mm-hmm. funk like touch to the typical like synth based dance track um it's definitely got a bit of funk in there um also the rap part is really really good um with the chip tunes like synths backing it i wish it was longer um but yeah this is probably one of my favorites oh yeah this is another one that i could have i, I would make an argument for being a a yep. single honestly because and this is the this is the e1 song i actually do like on this album well again but the, both production and vocals wise um Mostly just because, again, I've, I've I've made it known that I'm a big fan of, like, EXO, and it has tinges of EXO and SHINee, mostly just because of those harmonized, like, processed vocal uh, sections, like the, oh, yeah, 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 like, that part, just awesome. And then like, the chorus goes into that future funk that E1 seems to really like on this album. Um, I really like the, there's, like, the really cool, like, do 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 like, synth arpeggios that, like, yep. the, the sort of, like, chip tunes that Nate said, which I really, I really love, I, like, any type of, arp- like, arpeggio like that just sort of really brings a nice flavor to the track. Um, yeah, the rapping, really solid as well. Um, it, this is probably, honestly, this is probably one of the most interesting or just the most unique, um, songs yep. that I've heard on a one-on-one album, just production-wise, <laughs> in, like, let alone just the, the vocals, honestly. Yeah, it's just a really unique song that I, I'm i glad that they added on. It definitely helped break up the sort of monotony or sort of repetitiveness that we were kind of getting into with some similar style of tracks. I wish there was more of this style, honestly, because I felt like I feel like if they sort of explored this angle as a single, I think it could have worked well with... You could probably do really good choreography to this as well, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> Particularly, my favorite part in this song is in the pre-chorus as it starts to fill up towards the chorus, and then the chorus it kind of like drops, um, which again, as Andrew said, like the the beat in there was like really interesting and had a lot of different like variation and stuff like that that I liked. And uh, this song again, once again, it actually had like an effective hook. So yeah, that that uh, I definitely liked as well. Mm-hmm. This is the uh, yeah. other song that I circled as like being my favorite. It's between Awake and Deeper. Yeah. 
Mm. Uh, next we have Twelfth Star. Uh, so this is a CD only track. Um, and this is like pretty clearly meant to be their like goodbye song. Also, I don't know why it's weird that it's in the it's not the last song. Usually, like CD only tracks the last song. I, I, I think they kind of like I think the they kind of did it for like because it's beautiful part two. So kind of why yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. weird they that they just that to be the last song. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they just stuck it like right in between <laughs> for yeah, no yeah. reason. Um, but yeah, this is pretty clearly meant to be one of their goodbye songs. Um, so they performed it uh, on their showcase. Um, it's a good piano line. Um, vocals are obviously good. That's no downpour, but that's probably my bias speaking. <laughs> that, that that is your IOI bias, definitely. Uh, but even on my end, yeah, it's it's good. But again, I feel like it just juxtaposed with the other ballads on this album. It just kind of just loses yeah. its impact to some degree. Um, obviously, yeah, the the vocals and everything are solid. It's one on one, but yeah, I felt like. I feel like, if anything, like, I got more of an impact of, uh, oh, this is a goodbye song from Spring Breeze, and, again, like, the, the ending track, which is Beautiful Part 2. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so I thought I thought it was good. It was a good ballad. The vocals came out well. Um, I think for me, just the whole, like, concept of a goodbye track is just kind of, like, getting old to me, I guess. Like, after seeing all of... Uh, I guess a lot of my favorite groups kind of go out with just like this kind of song, just like, all right, here's the last thing. Yeah. Let's we're gone now, so you can have this, but not like well, what I mean, we normally would make kind of thing. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I that being said, I thought it was a good ballad, but it's just like, I just don't like the concept of that being a almost like a genre now at this point. Yeah, the goodbye song really yeah. is its own genre, yeah. like its own like trope at this point. Yeah, I think it. I think it makes more sense for these like project groups. Yeah, yeah. for for one oh, and I, I, th- I think it makes sense definitely. I think it's just like, but yeah, just because I'm with like Wonder I'm Girls getting over it one. now. Yeah, like that's, that's just all they like got. Ballady, and yeah, yeah, to anyone. So mm-hmm. It's just like yeah, yeah, just the other, the emotional impacts kind of lost just because we've seen a lot of goodbye <laughs> tracks. From other groups yeah. as well. Yeah. And none of them have been as good as Downpour. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, next is Pine Tree, uh, which is a cover of the girl group. Um, there's a girl group named wait, Pine Tree? There's a girl what? called Pine Tree? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> pause, uh, I was hoping pause. Jacob would get that one. I don't, okay, know, I don't I, remember this. So, I don't know one named Pine, Pine Tree. Pine Tree is, is Sonamu. Oh, yeah. We literally so. just talked about this yesterday in the <laughs> wait, Discord. What? So... Did that you might really? Have been, that I might have been today, today, actually. It was today or yeah, uh, last yeah. night. I don't oh, remember. Really? Yeah, I was no, like, yeah. what does Sona so, Move so, mean? When I first oh, heard I it, that. I thought I was ripping off Mama Moo because they had just been well, starting no, to pick up Steam. No, yeah, I knew I knew Sona Moo was Pine Tree from the beginning. So, what, yeah. what language it's is that? Com- is that Korean? Yeah, that's, pine that's tree? a Korean word for Pine Tree. Wow. Why would that. they use a different language? <laughs> I don't know. Why is it a song called Megusas 2? Yeah, that's true. Good point. But no, yeah, Sun and Moo is Korean for Pine Tree. Okay. So this is a cover of the girl group. No, uh, 101 fact number two or whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, so this is like the sentimental guy group song. Um, I think it fits well for like a final track because it's not a ballad per se. Um, mm. But it's still, yeah, it's that sentimental style. Um, I really like the piano part after the first yeah. chorus that like with the rap leading into the singing, like yeah. that part easily stood out to me. Um, Wait. this is probably one of my favorites, um, with Awake, actually. Yeah, I think they should have expanded on that piano section, honestly, more. Um, it probably would have mm-hmm. made like for a better track, but yeah, of, of the ballad tracks, I'd probably say this is my favorite of them and I think it could have would have served as a better goodbye track than 12 started honestly yep yeah I agree yeah yeah it, it just I I just resonated with it more honestly I think this one was way better than 12 star um so like right off the bat it, it kind of sounds almost like a Christmas song to me <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what gives off that vibe. So- it could be it could be the uh, the piano in the beginning. It could be replaced with bells, and it would still work. Like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel um, that Yeah, on it overall, it's. I thought it was a really good ballad, and I I think they uh, showcased their vocals like really really well here. Yep. Uh, and finally, we have beautiful part two. Um, so this is their other goodbye song. Um, it's a ballad, obviously. Um, but yeah, I thought this is a really good use of, uh, piano and strings. 
Um, I thought it was a good way to end the album. Um, obviously, it makes sense doing a part two to one of their most popular um, singles. Oh, yeah. yeah, one of the most popular songs. One of their better singles. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, yeah. It, it probably if I were to like rank Iowa, oh, Jesus Christ, Iowa. If I were to rank one on one singles. Very, probably, very, very. No, no, uh, we're not. We'll do, we're saying that's a topic. That's a topic. Where you're, you're, you're wasting our podcast. Um, <laughs> it'd probably be. It'd, it'd probably be energetic, um, light, uh, beautiful, then boomerang. Or no, I'd probably put I'd <laughs> Spring Breeze then Boomerang. I was gonna say Boomerang's <laughs> easily worst. Yeah, Boomerang's like at the at the bottom, but yeah, pretty much everything else except Boomerang was okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool that they of it's very fitting of all the songs to make um, beautiful sort of like the ending track, which is why it's, I think it's okay that they ended up putting Twelve Star like in the ninth spot um, and putting yeah. this as the end because yeah, it's a, it, it's like a nice epilogue to the. Uh, I guess the one on one discography in a way. Um, really nice touch that I like that the beginning of this is again they they bring that the cassette tape sort of sound that they uh, like loading the cassette tape in again it just brings it ties the motif together with like the infinity symbol and the the teasers that they had. Um, I love how again it wasn't just it wasn't just them doing like another verse over beautiful um, and just like a different lyrics or whatever they really did um, they changed up the instrumentals this is a lot more mm-hmm. this is definitely a lot more ballady it's just like a lot yeah. more like laid back in comparison to the actual um, or to the main version of beautiful uh, obviously the lyrics are really emotional as well and they sort of I love how they adapt that to sort of like fit like the goodbye sort of theme um, so yeah again I really this is this definitely was. I feel like this this is a song that they should have performed um, live as well, mm-hmm. or just mm-hmm. to see. I'd love to see them perform "Beautiful" part one into part two. Like that's what that, that, I, I, yeah, I don't uh, like because like, we like a ten minute song uh, like kind of thing. Yeah, like Paramore had um a so- had something like that where uh, they made us like years later they made a sequel to like one of their old songs and at concerts mm-hmm. they do like a tiny intermission and go into that so yeah, you could do really cool stuff with live performances that sort of way or just incorporate this maybe like one of the verses of part two into like and mix it or like kind of like do like produce 48 where they did like Korean Japanese just sort of like mix the the, the lyrics between both songs which would have been a co- cool performance as well mm-hmm Right, Jacob, Jacob, close us out. Uh, yeah, so honestly, I like this better than Beautiful Part 1, to be honest. Um, I think they made a really, really good use of silence throughout the throughout the song. And again, like uh, everything is more like understated, and then when it picks up, it really like picks up and fills up and lifts up. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it feels lighter, so to speak. Um, uh, vocals are really nice, and... Uh, yeah, I thought this was effective. I thought it did really well and is a good way to uh, close out the album. Yep, and close out one and one ultimately. All right, so uh, with that being said, we are going to get into our review scores. For those that haven't joined us before, we do a review scale out of 10 uh, with a maximum of 6 for the music, a maximum of 3 for concept, and a maximum of 1 for bias, or which originally was intended to just sort of be a free point, and it just sort of, or, but it just sort of turned into, do we like this group? Yes. So we always just give it at this point. It essentially is a free square. <laughs> so, uh, Nate, hmm. start us off. Uh, so for me, I did five out of six for music. Um, like I said, I started getting bored and like in the middle. Um, but overall, I think the tracks were pretty good. Um, I, I gave it a two for a concept. It was close between a one and a two yeah. for how bad the music video is, but the choreo is really good. Um, so I gave them a two overall. Um, also I didn't think it was, um, I, I think it deserved the point. And then I gave the bias point because I, th- I think it's an, like, I wouldn't say they're a favorite group of mine, but I think it's an eight, oh, not a seven. Mm. Uh, hmm. But it's pretty close for me. Like I could see myself giving a seven. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in the same boat where it was a close. It was a borderline seven, eight sort of situation. But again, I, I, I still felt it was an eight. Uh, for the music, I'd say like if it, they maybe cut it down. Because what I did like, I really did like. 
So I don't think like yep. the music's yeah. all bad. But yeah, I'd say if they if, if they maybe cut it down by like one or two tracks, I would probably would have enjoyed it more just cuz again, it kind of felt Same. like a bit repetitive. Um yeah, again, I'd say despite I, how much I really hated the like, visual aspect or just like the lack of focus on choreography, I think the choreography what they did show ended up saving the concept um uh score. So it does get a 2 out of 1 and obviously this is I've been since day one. I mean, granted, like it's kind of hard to keep track of one on one with all the groups that we cover. But I mean, they're still my boys. They're still my boys. I mean, I got even if I did, it wasn't my perfect lineup. I I still had to be there for them. So uh, they're obviously gonna get the mm-hmm. bias points. So it, it definitely feels like it's an eight out of eight. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, for me, I actually originally did give it a seven, but um, I don't know. As I was listening it to it while I was uh, reviewing, I was like, I, I think I was a little too harsh on some of the songs. So I ended up uh, bumping up my music score to five out of six rather than four. Um, I did two out of three for concept because, again, the, the MV wasn't anything special. Um, and nothing's bad, so I, I don't think it deserves a one out of three. Also, because I think it's an eight, not a seven. Mm. And uh, one out of one because... I do generally like one on one, like especially because they came out with Energetic, so I have yeah. to. So, <laughs> like mm. that's honestly well, probably one of my favorite K-pop songs, Energetic. Like, oh no, I, um, you could you can make an argument that Energetic is probably one of the best, like top ten K-pop songs of the past, like of the 2010s. Honestly, you can make a strong argument for that. Uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely up there. Like, um, but. Yeah, eight out of ten, basically. <laughs> yeah, so it gets so a straight eight, out of 10 overall. A straight eight, uh, no shiny, but I it still I I still would recommend it, obviously. And again, Probably if you're a big one, if you if you're a big one one fan, obviously you're gonna support them. So yeah, I mean, throbbingly Daybok albums or no, something else. Jacob. Yeah, we'll no, get that's to a that. throbbingly eight out of ten. because <laughs> it's all no, you, eight. Cause, yeah. 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 Okay, maybe, but um. So yeah, that, that, that'll close out the uh, Brutus section of uh, this show, though I would like to say um, sometime later in the year, uh, before the end of the year, we're probably going to do a like one-on-one, I don't know what to call it, like a, I don't know, just like a one-on-one like, retrospective or like, I don't know, like an after-action report or something like that, just something like, once the group officially disbands, I feel like it'd be nice to just sort of give, like, look, take a look, a look mm. back, mm. look back mm. on their short, like, I don't know, like two, like one and a half year uh, sort of existence and like say what we liked what we didn't like so still twice yep. as long as i <laughs> hopefully by then hopefully by then we see what uh groups are going to be formed out of the members yeah there hopefully as well, we'll so. see yeah i mean that's another thing we can sort of factor into just like predictions of how we'll think the the branch groups will do and everything so yeah just we'll keep on the lookout for that if especially if you're a wannable we'll definitely do uh they deserve it definitely just a a retrospective or just like a look back at 101 